So they call it the Federal Reserve's favorite gauge of inflation. It's the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index, PCE. It rose at an annual rate of 2.5% through February, and that's pretty much what was expected. As a matter of fact, when the Fed Chairman Jay Powell was asked about it today in San Francisco, he said, and I'm quoting him now, it's good to see something coming in line with expectations. Diane King-Hall joins us. She's the host of the Your Money Call podcast. And um, I should point out to everybody, we talk about business news today. There's no market mm -hmm. trading because it's Good it's Friday. True. So it's yeah. closed for the day. It, but what would you say about inflation? Because this is the favorite gauge of the Fed. It is. Uh, you know, so what do you say about it? Yeah, I mean, look, it was in line with expectation. That is what generally investors want to see at a minimum. Did it meet what we were looking for? You have both the overall number of PCE, but what the Fed pays attention to most is the core number. As you mentioned, that was 2.5% on an annual basis. So why does inflation matter in general? What does this data point manage? Matt, why does this data point matter to the Fed? It tells the Fed what it's going to do about interest rates and the level that it's set. At its last meeting, it left rates where they were. They've been in this higher for longer range. Why does that matter? It means that for the viewer at home, what you're paying on your credit card, the cost to borrow is more expensive. That's why you should pay off consumer debt faster because it is more costly to hold on to that credit card debt because you are in this range where you have higher interest rates. The Fed is looking for its the, this gauge to get closer to 2%. It has said consistently that 2% is its target. There have been there's been talk over the past year, and Connell, you know this well, that maybe the Fed's gauge needs to change or the 2% right. target needs to change. But the Fed has not moved away from that, and it's continued to reiterate it is a data-dependent Fed. This is one of the data points that matters the most in terms of the direction the Fed takes. Uh, so the expectation remains that at its next meeting in May, it still will not cut rates. The, what investors and overall analysts and economists who watch this number closely look for it to change by is by June. And one other point I want to make in terms of like why else this matters, it, it sets the direction for what the Fed is going to do about rates but mortgage rates as well. And we know that people have been kind of waiting on the sidelines because they want to see when rates are going to come down for mortgage rates because it has been more costly to borrow in general, whether you're talking about credit cards to home loans. It has been. What would you say about the stock market, mm -hmm. given all of that? I mean, what a run it's been. I mean, the uh, first quarter just wrapped up, and it's the best first quarter that we've had in the stock market in, in five years, and people want to know yes. whether it'll continue, you know? Yeah, I mean, since 2019, yeah. I, I mean, the, you know, investors have really just been off to the races this year. This is a good time for you to check your 401k, for you to check your IRA, especially if you're invested in an index fund that tracks the S&P 500. As you just mentioned, Connell, the S&P 500 has turned in its best quarter since 2019. The S&P 500 and Dow finished at records yesterday. Yes, the market is closed today in honor of Good Friday, both the stock and bond market, but it really has been just an off to the races and what many are calling an everything rally. It hasn't just been stocks that have gone up. You've seen other asset classes hit records, whether yeah. it's gold, et cetera, et cetera. So you're seeing strength in people's portfolios in general. And it, it, it's just a kind of this expectation of where the Fed is going. That's been part of it. And yes. also how many companies, how well companies have performed in terms of their earnings. It's always what so drives it at it, the end of the day is the earnings and how much co corporations are making. I, one one other point I would make, because we've had this discussion mm. when we're talking politics all the time, is like, how do people yeah. view the economy? I was reading these Gallup numbers that came out this morning. People mm -hmm. are still concerned, quote unquote, about the economy. But what's interesting to me about it, at least, is they're a little bit less concerned, maybe. Uh, the inflation is there at 55 percent. The economy's 52 yeah. percent. But what's interesting about that 52 percent, it was higher last year. In other words, I wonder if the perception's yes. changing a little bit. Well, there has been. There's been data points that show the mood of consumers has been better. So, you know, so people aren't quite as concerned. And, and, you know, part of that, it could be if they're looking at their 401k, they're looking at their IRA, it has been performing better. So mm -hmm. there is meat to that. While inflation has been sticky, so there have been challenges. And yes, some food prices have come down, but they haven't come down enough when you no. kind of compare it to where they were ahead of when prices started shooting higher during the pandemic. Oh, and by the way, we know that the Federal Trade Commission has been looking into that and are wondering in terms of 
retailers if there's an aspect of just because inflation, right? Yes. Or as some would characterize it, greedflation. So there is some scrutiny there when it comes to the grocers. The grocers are blaming it on the inputs. They're saying, oh, it's because there's higher prices here. But the argument now where the feds are, uh, the Federal Trade Commission, they have to. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.